Hello boys and girls, this is Stephman123 with TGN.TV bringing you something a little bit different. Today we're going to have a look at Gods and Heroes, Rome Rising. So this is character creation for Gods and Heroes, it's very very basic, you've got your basic class choices and then you choose your side, Juno or Pluto. So after you've chosen your side you go into your basic character customization options. There's not a hell of a lot here but there's enough to keep you going for a few minutes. So here I'm just showing you the basic options and this is in fast forward because it's actually quite a boring character creator to be, if I'm perfectly honest. So now jumping into the game. So what's going to happen next is I've skipped forward a little bit so you guys don't have to sit on the Starter Island watching me do all the boring newbie intro shit. So this is the first instance which is um, once you've completed it it allows you to leave the island. Some really interesting things in this instance are the giants which will actually pick you up and smack your head against the ground until you die if they get hold of you. But sadly Fraps decided to play up so I didn't get to show you that I don't think. So here we're just destroying cages, releasing some Roman people, all that good stuff. Oh, here's one of the giants, but I don't think he gets a chance to do his um, grab. I nuke him a little bit too quickly to show you guys. I'm, I apologise for that. I did actually go back and try and do it again, and it just wasn't happening. So here we're running through to the main battle, which is just outside this temple we've been in. These guys are pretty much holding up a magic wall, stopping... The monster's coming through. So here you've seen me level up. You get a nice little pop-up window saying you have new abilities and giving you all them. So we're going to blaze through here. We see a few fawns and stuff like that. The mythical creatures of the Roman labyrinths. And after we've got through here, you will see the first sort of... I suppose he's a mini boss, he's a centaur. I let this guy kill him first because I wanted to see if he had any special moves because a lot of these monsters will actually sort of interact with you. They'll grab hold of you and smash you against the ground or they'll pick you up on the end of your spear, their spear and throw you away. All sorts of stuff like that. There's some really nice videos of it on YouTube. So here you see me just beat down this boss. And the girl you can see with me is actually under my control. She's what's called a minion in the game. So the basic thing with minions is that I suppose everybody in this is like a pet class in a way because everybody gets these minions and there's tank minions which are basically a melee smash them in the face scream at them guys there's skirmish minions which are your ranged guys and then you've got your priest minions which are sort of your healers and your big nuke damage and stuff like that and you can equip up to four of them at any time once you've reached the appropriate level. And that's handy for running in instances. So say you have a five-man instance, each of you will actually have um, four minions with you as well. For a nice looking battle. And again, if you search YouTube, you'll see some of this in like the E3 trailers. But this is more of a first impressions video. So this that you're seeing now as well is my estate. This backstory to the game is that pretty much your estate was attacked and you were sliced and diced, but the gods have seen fit to put you back on the earth and give you your power. So you're trying to rebuild your estate and your foothold on the land. So this Pegasus statue pretty much allows for quick travel and I'm just trying to work out how to use it here because very helpfully the tips guide doesn't work in the game, which sucks. And here I've managed to work it out. So we're now going in to get my pre-order bonuses, which is this guy, I get him as a minion, and we also get Crab Dude later on, but I haven't actually reached him yet. Now this guy's a skirmisher, so as you see I've equipped him there, I've, my tank's gone away and my skirmishers come on. The reason for that is I'm at a low level so I can only control one minion at a time. Minions are really easy to control, basically you set the behaviour, click on what you want them to hit and press the go and hit it button. And that sorts that out. So here I'm just flicking through some maps trying to find out where to go. The um, map system, the maps look really pretty but the actual system itself isn't too good. Um, I mean pretty much this MMO is 
very similar to a lot of MMOs, but I have to give it a lot of credit because the game is actually very, very old. Um, it was being worked on by one studio, and the studio um, pretty much went bankrupt, so the game was never released, but it was slated to be a very, very good MMO at the time. Just because of the creature interaction and stuff like that, the way creatures will get hold of your player character and throw it about, and you can do finishing moves and stuff like that, it was slated to be really good. But and the graphics look superb for when it was created because I believe it was 2007 the company went bankrupt. So it's it's a few years ago and technology's come on a bit, so it's quite impressive for its age. But it's got a hell of a lot of flaws as well. I mean, there's buttons that don't work in the game, the help menus don't work in the game, there's quite a few bits. But really, it's your typical grindy MMO in the first few levels, so there's nothing massively unique that I've discovered in the first few levels. So here we're just running through, and we're going to kill some bad people for the lady. One thing I don't like about this game is I'm a bit of a completionist, so I want to do every quest available, and I really hate it when you spawn into a new area and there's 15 quest to pick up all at once to me that's a little bit overwhelming because I want to do everything I want to complete everything and in this game there's that many quests that I just don't think you'd be able to and if you did it I don't, I don't think it'd be worth your time to be honest because you seem to level up really really quickly so my first impressions of this game at the moment are I don't think you get too much bang for the buck in these early levels, to be honest. There's games that I would much prefer to play to this, but I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to go through, carry on playing for a little while, and see what happens. Because, I mean, the worst thing you can do, in my opinion, is write a game off in the first 10 or 15 levels. Because a lot of games really come along after those early levels. So, it's... As you can see from the UI, it's very basic, you've got your abilities on your hotkeys. The only thing that's different is the minion menu on the right, where you have the red, yellow and blue gems. The blue gem sets your minions to passive, the yellow gems that set your minions to defensive, which means when you get hit they will attack, and the red button that isn't working at the minute, and it's a known issue, sets your minions to aggressive, which is supposed to mean they will run and smash anything in the face that they feel like, but it doesn't work at the minute. The two swords next to it are reform, I believe. I may have that wrong. That may be the flag. And the final button on the left-hand side of that is the attack button. You hit that, they go and attack. So this is one of the first main cities of the game. And as you can see, they've done really well keeping it sort of historically accurate. You've got your amphitheater there for your gladi gladiator tournaments and stuff like that. You've got priest districts. It's it's very, very historically correct. As you'll see with some of the later cities as well. Something that I should mention is I was actually in the um, beta for this game as a 10 ton hammer elite tester. So I've seen some of the game and to be honest they've changed a lot and it has brought it up a lot since the beta so I wouldn't be surprised if they continue to do sort of these overhauls and it gets a lot better so as I say I'm gonna give it a chance but at the minute I just don't think it's worth the money and here we have a quick trailer from E3 that I've been given permission to use just to give you an overview of some of the cities So this has been Stefman123 in partnership with TGM. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune into the next. My YouTube channel is Stefman1231 if you're interested in more content from me where I play Minecraft, I'm doing Fabled at the minute, all sorts of good stuff. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you have a good day.